Are you cool? OBS cool. live. Yeah, we're up. Yeah. Ooh. The interweb is watching, Michael. I'm Pete Van Dyke. I'm hosted live from the Dutch Hall. We're really happy to have a great show for you here on Valentine's Day. We have uh, Shane Bergman here from the CFL Grey Cup champion, Calgary Sam Peters. Thank you, thank you. He's back again, creating quite a dynasty, and we're happy to have him as part of our show. He's one of our favorite guests. Hell yeah. But I have to get to a point before we start the show, and it's about Valentine's Day. And I want to say something. I'm offended by Valentine's Day at the very nature of the whole holiday. It, it bothers me to my core, not as a person, but as a comedian. As a comedian, as a comic, Valentine's Day is the one day of the year where they can... F where bad jokes are allowed to fester, you know? You know how you have to give, every, when I was at the age where you had to give everyone in your class uh, a Valentine card. You couldn't just give it to your sweetheart. Probably back in uh, my uh, parents' generation, you just give it to the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. You would make a homemade card, dedicate the rest of your life to this person, start a family with someone in grade two. That's what you do back in the old days. But now, but in my day, it was everybody. You don't want to let that one ugly kid with the birth defect or whatever uh, feel left out. So they said, everybody's got to get a Valentine. So that's the area I grew up in. And when everyone got a Valentine, there'd be a lot of awkward moments uh, between me, you and your buddies, you know? Like uh, charters would give me a Valentine, you know, if it was saying, be mine or something. 
that's awfully uncomfortable for me, you know? It seems like a uh, gay, for lack of a better word, right? And then, uh, so what it would happen is Charles was wanting to give me one of those cards. He gives me one of the ones with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, a joke. But the problem is these aren't jokes. These are poor excuses for the jokes. I mean, the school system's allowing this to happen, you know? What did the stamp say to the envelope on Valentine's Day? I'm stuck on you? That's not a joke. How did the phone propose to his girlfriend? Gave her a ring. That's shit. <laughs> oh, what's this? Uh... Uh, what do you call a ghost true love? His ghoul friend? Ooh. That's not even a joke. <laughs> this is the only one that I think was a joke at all these things that I consider a joke. Like, this isn't a joke. How do owls declare their love? Owl will be yours. Boo! <laughs> it's awful, right? Like, these are the ones that will go on the Valentine. You'll get that. And you'll laugh at it because uh, it's supposed to be a joke, you know? What is the best part about Dal Valentine's Day? The day after when all the candy's on sale. That's a real joke. That's the truth. Yeah. Charlie should give me that Valentine's card. <laughs> well, anyways, people, it is Valentine's Day. Hug your people, hug, hug your loved ones tightly. We have a great guest tonight, and we also have uh, a great game to end the show, the newlywed game that we're going to yeah. do with some of the cast and uh, their spouses from our show. But uh, there's only one way to get started, and we got to recognize the greatest band Canadian Light at Night history, the Nocturnal Misses. Let's hear it for the band, everybody. Yeah! <laughs> CRTC required Frenchman, the French tickler, Cat Belange, everybody. Bonjour. And in the corner, it's the balls of the nocturnal emissions, Whiskey West Higgins. Everybody, the nocturnal emissions. How'd that feel, guys? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Welcome to Live from the Dutch Hall. We are Canada's only late-night uh, talk show and the greatest podcast ever gets started in a pool shed in Pine Grove, Ontario. Bar none. Yeah. Bar none. I think there is none close. The Adcocks <laughs> tried one, but we squashed it. Okay? <laughs> we weren't going to put up with it. Anyways, we got Shane Bergman back on our show today, and this is a great, great uh, uh, accomplishment. Last year, you didn't come on. I think you took a year off, or was it the year before? It might have been the year before. I thought I did come last year. Oh, yeah. La maybe. I, I only, maybe it was 15, 2015. I did not invite you back because you didn't make the Grey Cup. I was like, it. you know what? You have to be at the level oh. of Grey Cup. Well, <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not. This year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I'm honored. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe your, like, your success that you've had so far. Oh, it's you. fantastic. Thank you. And we've been so uh, fortunate to watch it and enjoy it because mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're one of us, you know, you're a yeah. Teeterville guy, you know, a Norfolk exactly. County guy. And uh, see you doing the big stuff, you know, it really makes us proud. So we're really happy to have you here, Shane. Now, I wanted to uh, uh, do one thing before. Um, oh, shit, what was the thing I wanted to do with you? Oh, I remember. I was going to do, uh, you know, um, 2015, we brought it up briefly, right? And now you've been in the you've been in the CFL since what 2013? 13, yeah. Yeah, 2013, and then you went to the Grey Cup every year, but that one, right? Oh, 2013 and 15, we did not. Go. Oh yeah, uh, sorry, but 14 you went. Yes. And then every year since then, you've gone except for 15. Correct. Right. Yes. Four of the last five years, you've been in the Grey Cup. Yep. And that one year, you did not go, right? Mm hmm And do you know why it is? I've I've studied it. I've studied it to try to figure out why the Calgary Stampeders and all the other years they were they were uh, like the CFL a worthy team. Why that year did they not go? You want to know why? 
Can I tell you why? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to know what you think. Because I wasn't playing? Yes, it is. <laughs> you can't say that, but Levi Mitchell, right? No, that's right. No. He was in that game. He was. The one game you weren't in, yep. that's where it all went for shit. That's right. I guess it just worked out that way. Yeah, yeah. that's why they signed you again, <laughs> yeah, too, eh? Do you so. ever throw that in their face in the dressing room? I think my agent did uh, <laughs> in negotiations this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a good man. That's the exact move you want to use. Yeah, exactly. If you want him to like, go down again in an injury, you'll be squat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shane Bergman's your whole team. <laughs> you got to have some strut around those guys just for that reason, you know? Yeah, I should. Yeah. I should, yeah. Fuck me. You can't let them have that on over top of you. You know what I'm talking about? We have a great show here today. I want to talk more with Shane Bergman. But before we do that, we have to do a segment of our show that we call Feedback. We got feedback. We got feedback. feedback we got feedback this week's segment is brought to you as always by our friends at amazon if you'd like to go to the live from the dutch hall's website that's live from the dutch hall.com you can click on our amazon banners and do all of your shopping and some of that money is going to come to us rather than go to the uh, uh prick. yeah the bald guy that's uh, that's taking pictures of his dick or whatever <laughs> he's doing you know that guy gets nothing. We get money. That's like even better, right? Happy Valentine's. We're not going to spend the money on f photographing our penis, which I think is free nowadays, isn't it? Shane? Yeah, I think so. How much does that cost? I don't know. As much as a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he doesn't deny that he's taking pictures of his dick. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and also we want to talk about Norpac. The beef people. You just got to recognize them. They've got the best beef. And they sponsor our show, so we got to be happy about it. Now, we ask our listeners each and every week for feedback. And they get to us in different ways. This week, uh, we got some from Bruce Veltry on uh, live from the Dutch Hall at gmail .com. Hello, Bruce. Bruce, uh, uh, Bruce has been a longtime listener of the show. And he says, I tune in every week for the comedy and the friendly banter. But I also learn new words and improve my vocabulary. <laughs> Death pool episode was no exception. Today I will try to fit Spazitron into as many <laughs> conversations as I can. Thanks, Dutch Hall. Love Bruce. That's Dr. Bruce. Bruce. We taught Dr. Bruce shit. That's you're, a doctor, my mother. You know? You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, Bruce. You can go to a medical school or wherever you went to get that doctor. You ain't going to learn Spazitron there. You're going to learn that from our program. And you know where I learned it from? SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> He's in the Super Bowl. He's got to be good. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird, eh? It's super weird. Yeah. I don't know. Like, they're just trying to make everyone happy. Is that what it is? Yeah. Super Bowl stuff? Like to, it was them? just all weird. Yeah. Why would you book a Maroon 5, then, if you're trying to make people happy? <laughs> there's, there's no answer like who fucking watches football you know who played the great cup this year shane the great cup yeah uh calgary and ottawa no 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 oh, no, no, no. no. halftime show yeah yeah was it Art Kells? i don't remember was I it Eric Kells? i'm just no. taking a oh guess. you were actually probably worried about the game yeah i was gonna <laughs> was enjoy this to show <laughs> Fuck that Teeterville band. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we got another piece of uh, feedback. This one's from another uh, super fan, Sean Dulster. Oh. Sean Dulster, hot off of Life from the Dutch Hall, gmail.com. He says, Pope Peter, having a hard time coping with the new look of the Dutch Hall just because I was a big fan of the old pool shed. I am adjusting, uh, though, to all, uh, all the hard work is looking great. Just a few things I'd like to mention. Boy. Uh, most nocturnal emissions happen when lying down, but your nocturnal emissions never sounded or looked better standing up. Fair Ooh. enough. Eh? Fair enough. And I can't talk about how great that was to watch evolve, like when Michael first stood up. <laughs> 
It was like watching your baby take his first steps. It was so beautiful to watch. And then all of a sudden, Steven's standing up. And then all of a sudden, I think Kevin stood up. The drummer yeah, stood up. up as well. yep. And he was just like, I want a piece of this shit, you know? <laughs> and then uh, Wes was up. And then last up, Charters, eh? Old yep. Rooster. Nailed to the ground. And that's why he wasn't invited back this week. Was not <laughs> invited back. Last one up is out this week. Yeah. 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 That's why you're not back, because you sat down to the end, Charters. <laughs> Anyways, uh, number two, uh, more cameras. The lawn shots of you and the crew are hard to see. We want to see you, the band, and Paul Slitz. <laughs> so we do have to... That's a good point. That's a good point. Number three, you have not made Paul paint the start time of live from the Dutch Hall on the spiky ball clock tower yet. Paul, you will do that. You're gonna scale up that thing, right? Oh yeah, no yes. problem. Scale, and, uh, but the only problem is, we don't know when we start. Yeah, exactly. Eh? We, uh, we, a question mark, that's Yeah, funny. we just have to paint a question mark on the sign. He goes, cheers from Sean Dulster, P.S. Fuck Charters, the baby foot eater. <laughs> and that is a real listener. And Charters, you know, I wish he was here for me to show my disappointment in his choices in life. Because that is creepy. <laughs> Only a couple more people to, cho uh, to uh, check with, and those are our good friends that, that are like our super, super fans. The one of them is the cheese lady. We should check on her, eh? Yeah, we Teresa. Hey. Hey, at the Second Mouse in Delhi, if you're looking for cheese, you should go to the Second Mouse in Delhi. It's the greatest place to get cheese. And a good listener of our show, and I, and I would call her a sponsor and a friend, that's uh, Teresa from the Second Mouse there, the, week, the cheese lady. She gives us feedback each and every week. And she does it on Podbean. Podbean. And she says uh, this week, L M A O, or if there's an F in there, yep. right? Oh. L M F A O, paint naked paintball. Just keep in mind, I have a great aim with a gun, no matter how small the target. Ha 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 ha. Dirty talk. And then she went on to say, I have a feeling on one of your blind dates, I'll wish I was blind, and I'm still in. <laughs> Or I'm still game, she says. We are going to put uh, Teresa in a game, uh, uh, in a dating game situation. We are in the process of planning it. It is a big ordeal, Teresa. We want to make sure we have a, a proper date plan for you, and we want three suitable bachelors right. that are going to show up. They're going to make it not only uh, an interesting experience for you, Teresa, but hey, back. Hey, quiet off there, back. Or you gotta go wait in the car. Rowdy. Huh? Rowdy. Yeah, they can't even stay quiet till their segment, eh? Those ladies, eh? The spotlight's gone to their head. They're fired up. <laughs> Anyways, we got, uh, I have a feeling, uh, so she's, we're gonna do this blind date for her. And I'll tell you, Teresa, you're gonna hate every minute of it. <laughs> you're gonna rue the day you agree to this thing, and it's a bad decision. We're gonna put her front and center. We are going to make it uncomfortable in every way. But you brought it on yourself, Teresa. You made this idea up yourself. And you know we don't have any friends that are good people. And we You've heard our friends. show. <laughs> Everyone we've had on is a degenerate of some sort. Except for, um, what? Who? Yeah. We get a heckler. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we've had one, and it's crazy. I like it, actually, a little bit. Okay, we got to talk to the Haitian Dwarf. He's been with us since the very first week, and we have to get... And he gave us some feedback this week. Oh, I snuck one in, Steve. I got it. Oh, the 
Jason Dwarf gives us feedback on iTunes. <laughs> iTunes. I like how we wrote, uh, your pussy farts smell like sweet tarts. On the day that my in-laws decide to come to the program, <laughs> we decide to go, your pussy farts smell like sweet tarts. To make it clear. Hi-ho. So the Haitian Dwarf every week gives us uh, feedback on iTunes. This week he entitles it Happy Valentine's Day and he gives us five stars. In my country, we celebrate on March 14th with a giant steak. Does anyone know what that means? Nope. What does it mean? Do you know what it means, Wes? Steak and blowjob day. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Steak and blowjob day is March 14th? Yes. What's uh, what's uh, March, or what's April, no, not April 20th. What's the, what's the Jim Jeffries blowjob, or uh, anal sex day? <laughs> is it on March 20th or something? And it was, because I saw people at the Jim Jeffries concert, they had t-shirts saying like that day, like uh, <laughs> anal day? April 18th or whatever. It's like <laughs> anal day or whatever, once a year. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you, Station Dwarf. If you guys would like to give us feedback in the future, you can do it on iTunes. You can do it on the Podbean. You can do it on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or uh, just live from the Dutch Hall, gmail.com. You can also send me a smoke signal, shout out your window. You can just come over and tap me on the shoulder. Those are all ways to give me feedback. And they're all appreciated. Actually, my brother's wife, I just want to mention it. My brother's wife, Paul, your wife, uh, Krista, she gave a piece of feedback this week about the Pete Burns' Bridges episode. She said that uh, she loved it. She loved it that I was just telling everybody in my uh, career that I had built a reputation with to go fuck themselves. I think that's how she feels. Yes. There's also one local gentleman who will be having a conversation with me in the future. <laughs> that's good fun. That is good fun. That is good fun. It's all I, good fun. Yeah. I, I know that's going to get back to him because some of his buddies listen to this show. And I know it's going to get back to him, and I don't care. No. I stand by every word of what I said. <laughs> every word of it. it. Makes it even better. I can't wait till I have the confrontation with the gentleman so that I can actually uh, talk about it on the show. Yeah. It's going to be so much more fun. He didn't really screw me over when I was 30, I'll tell you that right now. It made me look like a jackass when I went to uh, uh That's why uh, yeah. you stated your feelings. Yeah. You know what? Ever heard the expression, revenge is a dish well served cold? I have. I just fed it to that CIBC <laughs> gentleman. I tell you that. I tell you Ice that. cold. Ice cold. He probably forgot about that. I didn't, Michael. Anyways, we have to get to our show. We have a great one today. Like I said before, Shane, how many times? You've probably been on three, four times now. I think four. This Ooh, is the fourth so time on our show. Great. He is not only a one-time Great Cup champion, but he is also a two-time. Two Great Cup champion. Yeah. That must feel pretty good. Yeah, Shane Bergman, great. everybody. Let's hear it for him again. Thank you. Shane, I have to tell you, two-time Great Cup champion. <laughs> and uh, this must feel good. You've been walking around staying pretty tall mm -hmm. since you won the uh, championship, of course, right? Yep. Yeah, you feel, like, good about it, right? I feel pretty good, yeah. And i got to ask you one question. I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true. Okay. Is a great cup in your trunk right now? No, I wish. Yeah. It is not. A great spot to bring it. I oh, wish. There was chatter. Oh, yeah. No. There was chatter. There was chatter online, at, believe it or not. Oh, really? Because you have a function coming up where you're going to get to. Is it this weekend? It's Monday. Family Day Monday. Family Day Monday? Yeah. So you can go to Teeterville? Yeah, at the fire hall from 10 till 2. Good. Yeah. And you can, uh, you can get your picture taken with a great cup? Great cup uh, of cards. would be pizza, hot dogs, drinks, coffee. Everything. Will you uh, sign an autograph? I will. I'll sign lots how of How much for a kid if they want to sign an autograph? For how much do I charge? Yeah, yeah. 200 <laughs> No. It's completely free. I even bought pictures for everyone to give to them. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. 200 yeah. I, like, I would like it if you just sat in like a raised platform and then made it that, like you are the greatest of Teeterville that yeah. has ever come out of and I have my stamp for my signature. <laughs> yeah. Stamp every time. Yeah. Mm. And don't look at me in the eye, kid. Don't look yeah. at me in the eye, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm a two-time Great Cup champion. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I understand you're uh, feeling pretty good about yourself, Shane, because I, too, 
I'm a two-time champion. Two-time. <laughs> Two times I won uh, the President's Club Award. I don't know if you know that. No. <laughs> wow. Everybody look at these two puppies right here. Very impressive. That is awesome. They are impressive. If you look yes. at those things, those are President Club Awards 2008-2009. Back-to-back, baby. Back-to-back. <laughs> wow. Now, I carry these things around wherever I go because I want people to know my accomplishments in life. You are a two-time Great Cup champion. Where are your Great Cups? <laughs> There's only one great cup. I do have one <laughs> ring right now, but I did not bring it. I was thinking about bringing it, and I should have brought it because that would have been funny for that bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> yeah. that, too. And you can put yeah. it on your middle finger. <laughs> yeah. And then you just shove it right up my uh, butt behind, right? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, but you have one ring, and the other one's still coming, right? Yeah, it comes right before we uh, go back to camp, so, like, end of May. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, uh, so, uh, right before, like, you'll get it. Like, when you go, you go back, or it sends to your house? No, we'll go back. We'll have a ring ceremony. So pretty much everyone who was on the team last year who was available to make it will go and have dinner and watch the owners come and give us a ring. So it's kind of neat. Ew. Yeah. That sounds gross, eh? Watching kinda the owners come. Little... Oh. <laughs> Think of that. <laughs> and so, anyways, whatever you guys do in Calgary, I'm not against it. It's a different era. But we got to I have to say, though. Be. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I'm sorry. Um, right. So um, I wanted to say, though, you, you've had a real, like, pretty much, a, I would say it's a, a blessed career, really. You yeah. played a lot of football in your career, like, yeah, as far yeah. as being there in the end game, mm -hmm. more than you haven't been. Yep. And you've won two in, in your uh, career, and you've just re-signed. Yes. So now, this is all must have exceeded your expectations of what you thought you could accomplish in football. Well, especially when I started. When I started, I didn't even think I was going to make the team. Yeah, yeah. And now... Maybe going into my seventh year, signed my technically with my third contract and uh, two Grey Cups, four Grey Cup appearances, and like, you know, it's kind of crazy to say being around here and stuff and being able to do that. Do you feel so, like a veteran now? Yeah, I feel like a veteran for sure. I, uh, I definitely on the O line because I'm the, now the oldest O line or most, oh, yeah. yeah on the team because our one guy who has been there for nine years he just got signed with Montreal. Uh, and he was on the team for eight or yeah eight or nine years, and I'll be going on my seventh. So now I'm taking over his most veteran i never thought i'd be able to say that on a pro pro, pro football team for yeah. sure so mm -hmm. yeah that really does say a lot though yeah. right because mm -hmm. it means that you have that longevity and you've done all the right things to stay that way yeah for sure now do you also think last time i talked to you i think the most fascinating thing i learned about you was that because you're a giant person right mm -hmm. And, like, if you were, like, in the olden day cfl like where you wore like a leather helmet you know mm -hmm. those kind of people like just being your size would be enough Probably. You could just eat chicken wings and drink beer and never, smoke cigarettes. Yeah, and smoke yeah. cigarettes. Never have to worry about any sort of like uh, rigorous training, right? No. But no. last time I talked to you, you said you were like juggling medicine balls blindfolded yeah. on an exercise ball or something like that. Yeah, with my eyes closed, juggle. Why well, don't juggle? Yeah. I bounce them off a little trampoline. Oh, with my right. eyes closed. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm standing on an exercise ball. With my eyes closed, and I bounce two medicine balls off a little trampoline. Oh, just for that, time. eh? Yeah. How the fuck I can't juggle that? at all. <laughs> yeah, but like if you like normally, but. just being a giant was enough. Yeah. And you didn't have to be able to do that extra tricks, but now you have to like, in the, to be in the CFL, you got to be on the top of your game because you got these yeah. other guys that are doing these things that are coming at you, right? Yeah, exactly. They're these guys are trying to make a living and trying to fed for their family, so they do everything they can to beat you to try to stay on the team, right? And everyone wants to get championships, so everyone gives you their best all the time. So, and it's not like it's big going on big all the time. I play guys that are like 260 pounds, which I'm like 60, 70 pounds heavier than. Yeah. So I got to be able to move too. Yeah, yeah. Just go around me. So yeah, 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 yeah. That's like what that kind of training trainings for a little quickness, quickness training. So, yeah, it's not yeah. all about size. Is no, it? not yeah, all yeah. size and strengths, but technique, it's, quickness, footwork, yeah, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. So. And that's amazing, like the amount of the amount of work. Because I, I never would have considered like how how much how committed you have to be in order to get to that level, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, like for you, do you think that growing up on a tobacco farm would have helped you, like for just like understanding that you this is a possibility, or you know what I mean? Like, well, the reason why I knew it was going to be a possibility is because my dad made it. Like, I worked hard on the farm, but like my dad made it made me able to be able to play so like i watched him work twice as hard so i could play oh so that's where i kind of get it from so instead of like hey instead of 
you know, instead of replanting tobacco, it's like, Shane, take the day off and train, stretch whatever you need to do, get ready for your next training session, football session, whatever you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, watching him going out and work, like I said, twice as hard so I could be able to do all that and he could still feed me, pay for my training sessions and all that stuff, you know. Made yeah. you want to work harder. Yeah, too, made me want to work harder and be yeah. the best I could be because he's doing that for me. So why not do something for him? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, that's nice, Shane. Yeah, You're a good exactly. guy, eh? That's why we keep having like him back, eh, Mike? Awesome. Yeah. Feel like it. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Not everyone's degenerates on your show. <laughs> no, you've been the best guest. Uh, the other, who else did we have? We had another one that isn't a degenerate? Just Shane. No, just Shane. Right? Just Shane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the one nice guy we've had on our show. Yeah. And it has been really nice. Anyways, uh, I can't believe it. We got you in good timing then because we can fill that Teeterville fire hall. I'll tell you that. Yeah, everyone's welcome. Yeah. I hope everyone comes out. It'd be great awesome. to see everybody. Can you put a baby in the gray cup and take a picture of your baby we, in the gray cup? Yes, we've done that. Yeah? Yep. We can. Do you get to party with the gray cup? I do. I'm having an event. It's invite only at my place uh, after. But I'm it's, not asking. Yeah, but that's going to be fun. I'm really excited. But you told me where it was, so I can still hide out and just watch it in the yeah, bushes. A, if you find my house, Tiro's not that big. I know where it is. You told me where it is. I'm not going to say it on air. <laughs> yeah. but I know where it is. I could be You know where there. it is? Come down. Just look for the ember of a cigarette in the bushes. <laughs> In the late evening, that, that'll be me. Be just watching. Drink, drink out of that thing after. It'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Are you? Would you drink? You drink out of the gray cup? Yeah, I, I lice all first. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I make sure it's clean. Yeah, oh, yeah. Last time, four years ago, I had the gray cup, and by the end, so I brought the Swazis, and by oh, the end, everyone movie. was drinking out of it, and it smelled like an infection. It was <laughs> awful. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my wife's best friend, mother, took a drink out of it, sick for a month. Couldn't like breathe, had to wear a mask, like couldn't infect other people, like oh. really bad stuff. And I was, oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, that, and that smell was right. It was an infection. So, <laughs> that's so what, that, extra Lysol this time, it got kind of gross. Yeah. Yep. That's why I only drink out of church chalices because and only you can't you. get sick from it because it's been you. blessed by God. Oh, what? True. And only you. Oh, yeah. And only me. I only yeah. use this. Yeah. But I think pewter and like when you're doing something, when you're drinking the like something out of like, uh, this isn't the blood of Christ. It's uh, um, vodka soda, to be quite honest. But it's close, and uh, <laughs> and I know that I'm only drinking out of it. But if me and you drank out of that, Shane, I think we'd be okay. He's lucky he split as long as we split the sides, right? Yeah, I think we'd be fine. Well, then what I'm going to do when I come to your party, uh, crash your party on the weekend, is I'm going to draw with a magic marker on the great cup just a little bit where my mouth will go. Okay. And I'll write with it on a, with a Sharpie, say, Pete's Mouth Place or whatever. And then that's where uh, only I'll drink that night. Okay, that's fine. Hey, that'd be cool if it was there forever, eh? It would be. Yeah. I'm probably getting in trouble. <laughs> it would Does there a guy that handles it, like the Stanley no, Cup? No, no, no. You, we don't have that kind of... They just hand, hand over the keys to you? <laughs> yes, give it to me. Oh, man, the I think, the I best. think it might be a replica. I'm not 100% sure. It's not... I think there's one that stays in the Hall of Fame, and there's one that they give to us that we can do what we want with. Oh, they so. don't even give you the real one. They let you get going. No. That's the same with the Stanley Cup, too. Yeah. Hey, they have a whole bunch of them. They don't mm -hmm. let you know how many they got. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so how okay. do you get it then, Shane? Do they just, like, ship it to you? Or yeah, you so actually. Off in the airport? Pretty much. Yeah. No, there's a coach that lives in Hamilton, and he's coming to party with it on Sunday. And uh, I pick up Monday morning from him. And then, oh, cool. Yeah, and then Tuesday morning, I bring it back to Hamilton for another guy who's from Hamilton. Okay. And he gets it. He oh, just yeah. goes around and ends up going to Toronto, then Quebec. Do you see how that all works? It's just a bunch of guys working it out, probably texting. Oh, I'll give it to him, and then he'll give it to him. It's just okay. like a bunch of dudes. That's what the, the CFL's like. That's what I like about it so much. They're just like, you're like a, a, to work in Joe's, but you're playing sports yeah, no, at a high level, level, right? You know yeah. what I mean? That's true. Actually, I have all the text the messages most, on my phone figuring that. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> completely right. Yeah, it is yeah. the most like regular sports league that I've, I've come into contact with. Like I've interviewed yeah, guys from the blue-collar professional sports league. I think. For yeah, sure. yeah, I yeah. Lunch pills every day. And you're also like, uh, like, like you said, like they'll just drop the trophy off and say you can't find the trophy. It's just mm -hmm. like if you want a men's league trophy at NBC. That's your turn. Your yeah. turn. And that's how the Stanley Cup used to be. You know, it's got all this pop and circumstance, eh? But it's still, it's still, it's still small and pure. It's still like the way it should. It's kind of nice, eh? Yeah, it is nice. In Ontario, we lose that. I know we talk about this every time you're in, but we lose it in Ontario, the, the specialness of the CFL. Uh, Did right. you find that growing up? Uh, not really, because I was a Hamilton Tiger fan, so I just surrounded around 
Hamilton fans. Oh, okay. You were a Tomcats fan? I was growing up, for sure. Oh, yeah. But uh, definitely going out west, I definitely see a huge fan base. Well, Saskatchewan can kind of take mm-hmm. out of it because Saskatchewan's like an NFL team for fan base. They're oh, just yeah. crazy. Like, even everyone else, maybe except for Vancouver, but you see, I mean, everyone else is yeah, bigger yeah. and well west. But yeah. I think what Hamilton was like, average attendance was 22,000, 23,000. That's, that's pretty good. It's good, but it's like, Saskatchewan's is like 40. Really? Yeah, we're like 28, and we've gotten lower, so, and then you got Montreal and Toronto are just- You have 28,000 on average for your games? On average, our stadium is, uh, if it's 42, Oh, you get a sold out game when you play Saskatchewan in Calgary. It's a sea of green. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It's awesome. It'll all I love away. it. Yeah, and then you get uh, we play Labor Day Classic against Edmonton every year, and then we have the rematch, and that's crazy too. We'll fill like 42,000 seats. Oh, uh, it must yeah. be something to play in front of that many people. Like, it's yeah, like, you it's get cool. the, the reaction must be something. Like, when the first time you're in front of that big of a crowd, and it, it, did it throw you off your game, or are you uh, still able to maintain your focus? I think I maintain my focus pretty good. You just gotta block it out. And I know as a kid, I asked professional football players, I'm like, what do you do? And they're just like, I block it out. I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. That's all you do. You just gotta focus on the play at hand and the play it's given to you and do your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, you wouldn't be there, right? So, yeah. yeah, I guess you do, right? Like, I guess it's, I would say the same thing with comedy. Like, when you go up on stage, you know, like, I would always be in the audience watching people perform. And then I'd wonder, you know, like, what's going through that guy's mind, you know, to be up there. That's now that I've now that I've been in that situation, I know you just gotta like plug through no matter how bad it is. Yeah. Well, that's freaking to me. I'd rather sit in front of a three hundred pound guy trying to hurt me than stand up and do comedy. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, that freaked <laughs> me out. That's that's kudos. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd rather not get hit by that big guy. <laughs> that's <laughs> where we're different. <laughs> that is where we're different. Yeah. I've never, you know, like uh, I, I, you know, what I do like about stand up though is that there is a certain element of danger to it. Like there, there actually is a like you could get stabbed or punched just performing in some of these places that I perform. <laughs> like it's a they're they're bad places. Like to do an open mic in most cities, you got to go to like like the worst parts of town to like some bar that they don't care what you do and then there's a bunch of like locals who are like uh, really they're there anyways because they're drunks like bar flies or whatever and they want to watch hockey and talk to their other drunk buddies and they don't want to listen to people talk about their dicks and those people will then like say they hate you like like all the time no matter what you say right and uh, that makes you like uh, stronger as a comic because you have to come up with a good joke to make those guys laugh because mm-hmm. uh, otherwise uh, uh, they're going to uh, stab you with a broken beer bottle on your neck, <laughs> right? But sometimes you do say offensive things because you're trying to find the funny in it and then, yeah. uh, and then you, you miss mm-hmm. and then you hurt someone's feelings and then they want to kill you, right? So like, those sorts of things are real pro- problems that you can face on a, a night. Like, I've seen like, like sweet, sweet people uh, get like uh, like uh, threatened or or almost attacked. One of my one of the guys I do comedy with that's punched in the face, and uh, he's a, he's not even offensive at all. He's a super nice guy. Just by like a fan or someone in the stands or whatever. Uh, someone in the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was after the show. And then one time I were, I, were, I was on stage, so I didn't get to be in the fight. But there was this guy, uh, and apparently he was in jail. And some guy did like a rape joke. And then uh, this guy that was in jail like had uh, some bad times there, you know? and so it brought back memories. And then he was really upset about the rape joke. Mm-hmm. And then uh, so then he made a big deal about it. And then it got into a fist fight out in the streets east of Adelaide. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then uh, uh, I was on stage, so I never got to see what happened. Oh, really? But it was. Uh, I was performing nobody at that time. Because yeah, everybody was on watch the fight because it was way more entertaining than I was. I on my dick. Anyways, uh, Shane, you've been through now four great cups. Yes. So your first one in 2014, we talked about that in a previous episode. That one was your you were kind of like almost a rookie, you know. I know you had the one game in the year before, but you you're almost a rookie. You made it to the mountaintop in your first first like real season. Yeah, first. first and uh, and then you must have that expectation that this is the way it is, right? Kind, kind of. of, kind of, yeah. 
especially the last few years. And now, like, uh, except for the one time when your team, mm -hmm. when you let your team down there with your injury. Exactly. Yeah. Stupid AC. You carry them all on your shoulders. Exactly. Right? Don't run AC joint. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then the next three years straight, you made to the Grey Cup. Yep. Two years, tough losses. Yeah. One year, then redemption. Yes. So, like, how hungry in the third year after, like, the two disappointing losses, one to Toronto, right? Yeah, no, we lost it, uh, the first one, Ottawa in Toronto, and then we lost to Toronto in Ottawa. Oh, right. Yeah. And uh, so this year, get another chance at Ottawa. It yeah. has to be, a, like, you must have been excited to get another crack at them. Yeah, I was excited for sure. And then, like, to be able to pull it off, this is like a, this is like a, re a real Rudy story. This is like a redemption thing. Like, you guys, this is the same guys who, like, uh, who, who like gave you the bitter defeat last year? You saw the taste in your mouth, and you go and you just shove it right up their ass, right? Yep. How's that? That's got to be a totally different experience because you have now you have you have like three great cups under your belt already. Mm -hmm. You uh, you have two losses following up. You're running the risk of being the new Buffalo Bills yeah. of the CFL. Yep. I've right? been told that. And then. So in that game, there's no motivation needed. You guys got all going to be up for that, right? Yeah, there was no motivation needed. But we had came down to, like, we had to learn from our mistakes, our first loss to Ottawa, and then we, and I have a feeling we, or we did, we did kick Toronto's butt, but we lost on a few plays, and people, you know, can argue with me on that, but, yeah, like, yeah. we didn't play very good for, like, six plays or seven plays, and they won the game. And so we just needed to make, change those little six plays, like, six plays changed that game, and like we balled out, like we, like our offensive line played good, our quarterback played amazing, and that field was a sheet of ice, and uh, like our defense like balled out, and like no one made the little mistakes, everyone played pretty much perfect. So, and, and do, do you think that the, and I, and I, I hate to say this, but like, you think that, that the losses were, the, were, were what, like, do you think that they were a blessing in disguise? Uh, as a, as a, a for, your whole, for the team that was there competing on that day, Having those two losses had to make you better prepared oh. for that game than not having those two losses, right? Yeah, it definitely made you better prepared, definitely. But it was just more of a motivator. Like it didn't make me. It didn't have any like competitive edge or anything. Like, you worked just as hard. You did. You all worked the same just as hard. Thing. Like I did all the same things. Uh, I might have changed a couple habits that I thought were bad the year prior. But otherwise, it's just a huge motivator. Like we need to get this win. We need to get this win. And like, but otherwise, okay. But like you know, in this way, though, if you were like, uh, if you if you would have uh, won, like, all, if you would have four great cups right now, mm -hmm. would you be as good of a football player as you are having only two? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yes. You think you would be? Oh yeah. But you wouldn't have had those failures to make you yourself better because you, you would have thought you're good no matter what because he yeah. keeps working out for you. I don't know. I bet you are better because you had those two losses. That's I, I know how to deal with loss better. Yeah, but I, I think know. you you made you made changes even yeah. subconsciously because you didn't want to do it again. Whereas if you won, you'd be like riding high, thinking your yeah. fucking shit don't stink, right? Yeah, that's true. Just like this year, Shane. But everyone, when they judge champ, or when they judge uh, people, how good people are, they judge championships. Like, that's yeah, the yeah. argument everyone makes in every sport. Yeah, yeah. Right. ever. How many championships do you have? How many championships does he have? Yeah, that's true. So, I guess so. Like, it's not about wins loss. It's about how you bring the the end goal is the championship. So yeah. if you have the most of those, you win. You got your quarterback back this year too. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. That's good. You got. Yeah, the, I'm really excited. Yeah. I'll have him. So like, you you really kind of built a dynasty there in uh, Calgary. You must feel like you have a core of guys now that have like been there for a while. And yeah. How, I mean, how big of a group have you said that been there the whole time with you? I would say, like, over the past six years, there have been at least 10 guys and 12 guys that have been together and not left, maybe even, like, 15. Yeah. This year will be different. This year, we do not have all those guys back. This is the biggest free agency year I've ever seen. Oh, really? So, so you guys, I uh, believe, are probably the two? We're back. Our whole offensive line's back except for our starting right tackle, so we solidified that. And we solidified, solidified our quarterback, but, I mean, everybody else, we have a couple of them in our defense, but otherwise our defense is pretty much gone. All we right. have two DBs back. Uh, they're really good players, which thankfully, but uh, everyone else is gone. Like our linebacker's gone, our one stud D tackle went to Saskatchewan. So, what do you think it is in Calgary that gives you that success? Do you think it's the systems, the coaching, the, or the I 100% believe it's the culture and the coaching. 
Yeah. Like I said, they treat you like people out there, which is nice. Because I hear people they treat people like numbers, or just number one or two or three or four or whatever. And they treat you like a person. And uh, our coaches and GMs are really good at scouting talent. Like, I don't know, they drafted me six overall, or not six overall, six round. Sorry, like I forget which which overall six round. And uh, you know, six round people usually don't play seven years and start. Yeah, yeah. they're not really good. Games. They so they're really, really good at judging talent. So like when they when the guys are getting better and demanding big ass contracts, they usually leave. Yeah. They can get kind of those contracts somewhere. But our coaches are really good at finding that talent and they'll bring a guy in, make some less money, build him up over three or four years, and all of a sudden four years down the road you'll see him sign a huge ass contract, leaving Calgary. Yeah. It's just the way Calgary's been for years and years. It's kinda of like the Patriots that way. Yeah, keep yeah. your core set, like keep Tom Brady, keep keep the guys you need yeah. and just recycle everybody else in and out and find the best talent. And you've made a man stay for the whole thing. Yeah. You're like the Gronk. Yeah, kind of. I'm not like the Gronk to, to Tom's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Kind of. Probably about exactly. I, But yeah, I, and, uh, but I would say that, uh, like, you, you, you've only played one team, right? Yeah, I've only played one. And, uh, yeah. like, it's kind of nice, like, because you're, like, you're, like, at, it, like, at this part where you might be able to stay one team for your career, you know? Yeah, that would be awesome. I would love it. That's a right rarity in here. sports, man. Like, yeah. That is a real rarity in sports. So, like, even to go this long with one franchise, you know if you make the Hall of Fame now, you know which jersey you're going to wear, right? Yep. No matter what, you've yeah, got no this much what. of your career into yep. Calgary. Well, I already told my – before I resigned with Calgary, I told my wife, I said, even if I resign somewhere else, I said, I'm going to retire at Stan Peter. Yeah. Because so, yeah. I know I, my career is closer to the end than it is the beginning. Like, I played six years. There's no way I have six more years. Yeah, that's what I got. And when we were talking last time, uh, we were, like you would just talk realistically about the struggles and the and the demands that are on your body. It's like getting in a car wreck every week, right? Yeah, it is. I feel terrible every week. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> yeah, it is brutal to hear to hear what you guys go through. But it's a pleasure always to have you in, Shane. Now, we're going to do a little thing to end the show. It's called the uh, Newlywed Game. Mm -hmm. We're hoping you could stay around and be the judge. Yeah, of course. For us. And maybe even if we could uh, get you to give some of our newlywed couples some advice, maybe that would be helpful. So I understand you're married, you're newly married. Well, how long have you been married for? It'll be three years in March. March three years already? Wow. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Congrats. That goes fast. Thank you. Congrats. Well, congrats. Uh, Shane's a little bit ahead of uh, our one newlywed couple. We're going to introduce our couples now to start the newlywed game. Ooh. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's hear it for Shane Burton. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> There we go. Hey, I wanted to say, uh, our newlywed couples, let's hear it for them. Uh, first of all, we have fresh off a new wedding a couple months ago. It's our band leader, Michael Ball, and the beautiful, sweet, sweet Kelly. Our second couple, they are not married, but they are soon to be married. It's Whiskey Wes Higgins and his beautiful fiance, Alicia. And our third couple is our radio couple. They've been married for how long, Steve? Uh, we've been married for 10 this year. 10 this year, yeah. 10 years, but they've been together a heck of a lot longer. 23. 23 years. They're a rare couple. If they don't win, there's something wrong with your marriage. It's Steve and Leah. Hey. All right, so before the show, we, we got the women and the men separated, and we asked them both questions, what they thought their spouse would say. No cheating. Sorry. No cheating. <laughs> you'll, notice, you'll notice your name cards are behind you. One has an S, one has an L for Steve and Leah. That you, and uh, I think they're also color coded for boys and girls. So when we will ask the question to one of the competitors, the other one will hold up the answer that they asked. And any correct answer is given five points. The team with the most points wins. Simple as that. Any uh, decisions will be left to our judge. Let's get on with the game. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Okay. First of all, we'll start with the ladies. The ladies. We asked the ladies a question. We'll start with Michael. Michael. Hello there. What uh, did Kelly say is the one thing that she does that drives you crazy? Uh, puts the dishes in the sink before I clean them. 
Can you hold up your answer, Tony? <laughs> I nail it. Billy the Sink with Dishes. Oh, That's my yeah. Kelly and Michael. Yeah. Oh, God, really? Game. Got it. Leah, <laughs> same question. Uh, what is the one thing that you do that drives your partner crazy? What is the one thing that you do, right? No, it's what he does. Now, what is the no, one I thing? I do that drives him crazy. Yeah. What is the one thing that she does that oh, drives you crazy? crazy? You know what? It's very much like the other couple. You like to leave sharp knives in the sink. Oh. oh. Uh, it doesn't seem blood promising. What's the answer? You move my shit around. Yeah. Move my shit around. Move my shit around. Oh, no Wait, points for that one. <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna go to Wes. Wes, what will Alicia say? It's true. Is right? the, to the same question. Is the thing that she does that drives you crazy? Puts her cold ass feet on me in bed. Oh. oh that is the answer, Alicia. <laughs> Don't take time for myself. That is not a, uh, Mike and uh, Kelly. Round one. Uh, leaders at five points. Okay, we're going to go to the next question. To the men. To the men. We asked uh, Michael this question. Uh, we're we'll start with Steve and Leah this time. Steve, we, uh, we asked Steve this question, Leah. You have to guess what Steve said. Oh, I have to guess. Yeah. Uh oh. When your lady is getting dressed in the morning, which one of her outfits do you hope she is putting on? One <laughs> of my Auschwitz outfits. <laughs> Auschwitz? Oh, 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 no. 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 I knew he was a German, but I didn't think there would be some sort of like Auschwitz sex. Auschwitz sex? That is weird. Eh? What did you say? I don't know what I want to back next week, Wes. Is it like an Ashley color? I can't. Nothing at all. Oh, it's, it's a close one. It is close. You dismissed to the, the uh, emasculated uh, starvation such. Wes! If your wife were to, no, oh, sorry, Wes, when, uh, uh, we asked Wes, when your lady was getting dressed in the morning, which one of her outfits do you hope she's putting on? What did Wes say, Alicia? My own? Which you, uh, my own? Yeah, which one of your outfits? Are you? <laughs> oh your own outfit? Yeah. Wes said, Wes, what did you say? They're bonk. Hang on, my fingers aren't working. Oh, sticky fingers. Uh-oh. It's Valentine's Day. Blue scrubs. Blue scrubs. Uh, yeah. Blue scrubs. Same question Michael was asked. Kelly, what do you think Michael said when you're getting ready in the morning? What does he hope that you're putting on? I was going to say, like, like gym clothes, like workout clothes. Ah, uh, workout clothes. Michael, what did you say? Good answer, honey, but I went with uh, the Royal Blood t-shirt. Oh. Yeah, there's something sexy about it. No underpants. <laughs> Wait, no wonder if you That is really hot. I like when I slow down and I hold on to the counter. Oh, that is hot. If you're, let's go, we're going to do another one for the men. Michael, let's, uh, let's see if we'll keep this thing going. Maybe you can get it back. Okay. Kelly, if you were describing Michael as a superhero, who would he be? <laughs> Superman? Uh -huh. Not Superman. I went with the green guy. The Hulk. The Hulk. The Hulk. Tough question. Is it? Steve, uh, uh, or Leo, what superhero would Steve be? He would be any none. None? <laughs> the non superhero. Okay, maybe that's not the answer. You think he'd put none? Um, the Green Lantern. No, I had a caveat in mind. I said Superman because lame man doesn't exist. He did say lame man doesn't exist. Which is like partial points because they both agreed Steve's no superhero. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no. Fair enough. Alicia, what, did Wes, what would you say Wes was if you had to describe him as a superhero? Who would he be? I'm going to say Iron Man. Oh, so close. Who'd you guess, Wes? Spider-Man. Spider-Man, oh. Spider he said. Because he shoots ropes. Oh! <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> that was a cat for that one. 
<laughs> okay, Steve. We asked Leah, if you were cleaning out the closets, what is the one thing you're, of your man's that you would throw away? That I wouldn't throw away. That you would throw away. That's how it's written. Something of mine that you would not throw away. Oh, you would. That I would. You would want to throw this one thing away. You clean out the closets. Mm -hmm. There's one of your things she wants to get rid of. What is it? She may have answered the opposite, though, because of her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I answered what I wouldn't throw away. Oh, all right. Well, then now you know that. Now I know that. Uh, you wouldn't throw away concert t-shirts. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well done. Five Ever. Nice. Ever. Uh, Wes. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Leah. Uh, Alicia. That's me. Alicia. Yeah. What did what, what would you throw away of Wes's from his closet? I asked him what would, what, oh sorry, I asked, closet, so Wes, sorry, I apologize, Wes, what did Leah say she'd throw away, the one thing, Alicia. Alicia say she'd throw, ah, oh, drama, <laughs> all right, torn jeans, torn jeans, old shoes, old shoes, this is part of the show, Fine. Okay. you're getting scut, <laughs> Kelly, what did Kelly say she's going to throw out in your closet of yours, the one thing she would throw away? Well, I'm going to have to say uh, she's been putting me through the gears in this lately. With, uh, just did this this week, so she doesn't in, know it's a problem. She's into this uh, Marie <laughs> Condor, or whatever her name is, thing. So what would you have me throw out? Well, I was going to go with this uh, shirt, but it's, I did throw it out. My wolf t-shirt that I got in Nashville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you throw that out? That's, that's one of my favorites. Do you think I want you to throw that out? Yeah. No? I did say t-shirt. Just t-shirt? Ah, oh, come on. Really it's a t-shirt. Specific t-shirt? I think that counts. What? I think that counts as a point. Hey! Oh, ten five. Oh, boy, Shane. Thank you. 10-5. He has more t-shirts than anyone I've ever met. All right, we're going to go. We're going to keep this thing rolling because you guys okay. got it going. We'll stay with you. What uh, did Kelly say was the one material thing that your man owns that means the most to him? Material thing that means the most to me? Mm. My guitar? Your guitar, is that right, Kelly? Good job! Hey. Oh He's opening up a whole back sleeve. Wes, Wes, what did yes. Alicia say is your one material thing that means the most to you? I would also say my guitars. Also his guitars? Yeah! Oh, Wes. Yeah. Wes is on the board. Excellent. And now we're going to uh, Leah and uh, Steve. Also. Steve, what did Leah say? Is uh, the one thing that means the most to you, material thing. It's easy, it's my computer. Ooh, no. Oh, <laughs> <And> guitars. Ah, <laughs> uh, everyone said guitars and Steve said computers. You know, Steve, that's really lame. <laughs> <laughs> it's really lame, man. It's true. It's nine years old. Okay, so we got five, five, fifteen. Uh, we're gonna go with one last question and this. <laughs> Uh, this one, uh, it's going to be an easy one. See if we need a tiebreaker. We asked the ladies, oh, sorry, we asked the men, what would your ladies say is the first thing that your man does when he wakes up in the morning? We're going to start this with Alicia and Wes. What is the first thing that Wes does when he wakes up in the morning? Uh, 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 really? Really? Oh, that's number four, Wes. It'll be number four. Yes, I am. Just so you know. We kiss each other. Kiss! <laughs> the first thing we do is kiss. Wes, is that right? <laughs> fart! <laughs> it's fart, kiss, it's fart. kiss, fart! <laughs> Steve and Leah, uh, let's 
as for question number four, what is the first thing that uh, Steve does when he wakes up in the morning, Leah? Goes back to sleep. Goes back to sleep. <laughs> Steve, what did you yes. say? Not before I pee. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. yes. This is it. You guys have already got the victory. But can you uh, can you uh, stretch this out for the clean full prize pack? Nice. So, yeah. From the first cabinet afterwards, it's going to be a shopping spree wow. for you. But can you just break this just... open and show these people that you are the super couple of the odd teens? If I get this wrong, then he's lying. It's he farts. Oh. You're lying. That was my second <laughs> answer, honey. You are. He I went pissed. with Bess as well. It was hard yeah. then, Bess. I should have went with Mark. Yeah, I know. It was a real, it was a real struggle for me. I was. saw the struggle. I believe that. What is it? Piss or fart? <laughs> Either way, I'm heading to the bathroom. <laughs> this has been live from the Dutch Hall. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Happy Valentine's Day. We'd like to thank our guest again, Shane Bergman, for coming and joining us today. We'd like to thank the Nocturnal Missions for being the greatest band in Canadian Lightning in history, and we'd like to thank every, each and every one of you for listening. So until next week, let's see you in. You want to go back and play sure. sure. okay. I'm sorry. Until next week, we will see you, Ranty. See you next Thursday. <laughs> Give her, boys.